Alright, what do we win? I don't often show the wheel spins in the game, but redeeming one is a daily challenge. <laughs> and of course we get 1,000 credits. Fantastic. Well that's one point closer to our goal. Uh, we have two on the board from the Rivals events, which I'm sure meant to count for more than just one point each, but never mind. Uh, then we have that one daily challenge out of the way. I'm going to try and make this relatively quick, so let's get onto it and check out the Toyota GR Supra. Now it just so happens that the GR Supra is one that I own, have upgraded, and painted previously. So hopefully they don't want me to spend more money on it. <laughs> we shall find out. So what they actually want me to do is get six stars at speed traps. Well, you might think that, oh, we'll just go to the runway. Well, maybe not, because those ones tend to have very high scores that you need to get in order to achieve them. Whereas something like this, not so much. So that, I'm fairly sure, should have got me two stars, I think? So three runs on that, and we should have the six stars that we need. But we need a little bit of a run-up. Cut the corner a little bit, get as fast as we can through here. I'm not sure if that was enough for two stars, that might have only been one. And even if we just have to do like one or two more, this isn't a very long stretch that we're having to work on. So we're not taking too much time to get it done. 181, that's not bad. Let's see if it gives it to me. Nope. Okay, so we must have only got one star on one of the runs. That's right, because I think it was about 177 was what I needed for two stars. And we only hit about 170 on the return trip last time. It is tricky to get a good run-up coming this direction. But yeah, 168, so we can manage that time as well. But there we go, spoiled for choice. Next one, try to match up to the quarter mile time of 12.2 seconds, a winner drag race event. Okay, that can be tricky. Now, usefully, there is a drag strip right here. It's called a runway, funnily enough. Uh, the funny thing is that it has us going this, but not this direction, uh, coming back this way, which means that the end is always crashing into the pyramid. So that's another reason why to do this one instead of the other one. <laughs> Now drag races can be pretty fickle because it depends very much on who your opponents are. As you can see, everyone is just leaping off the line. Thankfully I did do some good tuning on this car. I also dropped the AI difficulty down because I don't need to be racing against highly skilled opponents in this one. So let's just make it easier on ourselves, shall we? And through we go and let it run long enough and we should crash into the pyramid. There it is. <laughs> Fantastic. And now all I have to do is take it for a joyride for eight kilometers apparently. Well it's 5.4 k's to one of the destinations that I do want to get to. Uh, not for this car specifically, but one of the other challenges, one of the PR stunts, is a drag zone, uh, not drag zone, <laughs> drift zone. Drag zone, now that would be funny. Happy Pride everyone. Um, it's in a anything goes like S2 car instead. Uh, so we certainly won't be using this for that challenge, but we can drive to get there for a change instead of just using fast travel, which is what we usually do. <laughs> Let's jump on inside the car for a change. It's pretty rare that we actually drive our cars outside of racing, so kind of nice to get the opportunity. It is a bit annoying when they do set those things though. It's like, ah, oh, now just drive the car for eight kilometers. It's like, for, for what purpose? <laughs> Give me a race to do or something. Come on, tell me to win a street race. Most of those are almost eight kilometers. That would be a bit more interesting. But never mind. It could be worse. And I'm just intentionally going the wrong way here because if I have to do eight kilometers, then I'm gonna stretch out from oops, from the shortest route. I'm going to push it a little bit longer to try and make sure that I do 
68 kilometers by the time I get there. Also, it's just a little bit more interesting. And if anyone's watched any of my truck simulator content, you know how much I like frustrating my vehicle GPS. We don't get Geralt sighing and desperation at us in this, but it's the next best thing. In 400 meters, turn right. You know what, we could actually turn off all our driver aids and do a drift through the drift zone and see what we can get even in this car. Turn right. If it's anything goes, then it should still count. So let's do that. Let's get rid of the traction control and everything. Alright, now. Traction control, off. Stability control, off. Manual gear shift, on. So we are now just going to be revving the hell out of it in like third seems to be the butter zone for this one. And we'll see what we can get in this vehicle. I think I need like 120,000 points or something for the sake of the challenge <laughs> for the PR stunt which is a lot but we are racking up a decent amount already so I mean this is a rear wheel drive car it is pretty good for drifting turns out you know what this might be easier than I thought <laughs> So I can't remember what I needed, but I thought it was around 120,000. If that's the case, well, I have a feeling I might be about to set a PB on this. I think originally I used like a Dodge or something, or a Corvette, one of the Formula Drift cars. 180 is a nice number. There you go, 185,000. Seasonal objective complete, there it is. We didn't think we were going to, but just because it says S2, doesn't mean that you need to use it as two it's just that's the maximum that you have to use <laughs> brilliant well we didn't see the pop-up for the drive eight kilometers thing so we've still got a little bit oh there it is moving forward there we go so we've now finished that so we no longer need to drive this car in particular our next pr challenge is a speed zone that we have to do an average of about 180 something k's an hour I think on one of the jungle roads so it's not far so we may as well just drive there anyway it was kind of on the way to be honest we could have done that first but never mind doing the drift run was fun I missed the turning so let's just do a little bit of cross country here why not howdy doody right so through here it's going to be hard to get a good start on this. I'm not even sure what car is going to be best to use for this. Probably our off-road tyre Mosler or whatever we have in this. Because this is going to struggle, I think. I've turned all of my driver aids back on again, that's for sure. But yeah, I'm fairly sure I had to get like an average of 170 or something. I imagine I'm meant to use like an extreme off-road vehicle. I have an extreme off-road vehicle that's a hypercar, so, but, you know, we'll see what how close we can get. 142, 143, yeah, not far enough. Yeah, 49 k's an hour more required, so quite a lofty goal. So let's swap out for something with a little bit more grunt, shall we? Now, the Mosler is what I use in Forza Horizon 4 for these sorts of events. In this, it's an Ultima. This has off-road tyres... Rally springs, all the good stuff. So we should hopefully, if we don't go sliding off the track too much, ugh, or spinning around, it is still very skiddy. Hopefully we can get our goal. 182, no, not quite enough. Ooh, 11k an hour more still. Alright, let's run it back from this direction then. It is a very tight corner at the end here. I think we really want to do that on the way in rather than the way out, but hey, we'll, we'll run it back and see how we go. We get up to a good speed first. We just need to take these corners a lot better, because I was just bouncing all over the show. I don't really want to do that either. I 
Okay, I can just cut that corner. 198, there you go. It was chaos, but it was good chaos. And it got a new PB, in fact. And seasonal challenge complete. Well, while we have the off-road supercar out, uh, we've apparently got some robots to smash by the telescope. I don't know why. This makes no sense to me. Is it like the... That's the Wall-E robot, isn't it? The one that isn't Wall-E? I don't know. I'm as confused as they are. But I needed to hit teeth of them, apparently. So, bump fa bump fa bump fa oh, here we go. Nice run on. Ah. The steering's too good, and I missed one. Here we go. Through here. Crunch. Crunch. How many more have I got to do? There we go. Mascot of the future complete, apparently. Random, but it's points, and I'll take them. And back into a Supra. Different one, this one. 98 Supra. Classic. We need five more points to get our season reward. At least the first one. And the best way to get points is the event lab races. So let's work our way through the field and get this one under our belt. Two laps of, once again, another classic case of uh, put big tall buildings around a track. <laughs> But, I don't know, this one feels like it's been done pretty well. Except for this bit here that seems a bit dingy, but... We've got grass growing in a tunnel. I don't know, I feel that they've put some effort into this. It is still a little bit same-ish in terms of just having all of the big buildings overlooking the track, though. <laughs> I feel sometimes less is more. And there's a cool bridge up above that uh, I'd prefer to be driving on, rather than driving under. <laughs> I think the AI are getting a little bit confused with some of the corners as well, which is unfortunate. I'm not sure how, because these weren't difficult. It wasn't tricky off-road or anything like that, it wasn't hugely narrow. The corners weren't sharp, there weren't like weird runoffs or anything. I'm crashing on them, but that's just because I'm me and I'm not good at this. The AI should not have had an issue. And I did turn them back up again after the drag race. <laughs> drag race, I put them down to novice to make that more of a fate accompli. This one, they're back up to highly skilled because it's an actual race. I don't see drag races as being as competitive or as useful as in terms of having the uh, driver difficulty turned up it's not a really a challenging race it's more just a case of do I have the right tuning for my car <laughs> I mean tuning helps in normal races as well of course we've vacillated about tuning so much previously and had to go back and forth in all manner of configurations but you can often get away with a subpar tuning over the course of an entire race and if you've tuned for speed you make it up on the straights if you've tuned for corners then you just have to outmaneuver and then block out on any fast straights i'm fairly sure this car for example is tuned for maneuverability which is why we've done really well on this pretty twisty track that doesn't have a huge number of open straights and we are almost done just down final corner section around the bend and across the line and we've got to figure out how we're going to get all of the rest of our points for the championship because I would like to try and get it all done all at once but that can make for a very long video if we have to do all of the championships and wouldn't you know we're back in the 2020 super again because I'm not quite sure what the criteria of eligibility for this race was, but it was like Mitsubishi's and Nissan's. I think it was just Japanese cars, basically. A rating Japanese cars. So we've got Toyota Baja in front of us, because of course. But this is a road race. Uh, this is tuned for road racing, I believe, whereas he is probably not. So hopefully we'll do well. <laughs> And an A800 rating isn't too, like, 
stupid. Got another super in front of us. So he's probably going to be our main competition, funnily enough. But being an event lab race, we don't know whether or not the AI are going to like the track very much. We'll find out. This is at least an interesting looking raceway. I like that it's more open around the edges. We've got grandstands where you'd expect there to be. We've got large buildings, but they're in the background instead of just looming over the track. So yeah, overall, bit of a fan. Oh, and I've got some uh, Mexican pyramids off in the distance as well. Yeah, I kind of like the aesthetic for this track. It's pretty challenging too. A few nasty corners at the back end there. The AI seem to be coping, and I seem to be coping, at least for now. So, all in all, signs of a pretty good track. It's just the car eligibility is a little bit odd. I think they probably should have restricted it to, like, modern sports cars or something. Might have made a bit more sense. Rather than it being just a complete free-for-all. Having a sharp bend after a rise like that is rather cruel. <laughs> you get up speed, you almost do a jump, and then you have to slam on your brakes at the bottom to get around the corner. Well, it certainly, it certainly weeds out those who have been paying attention, that's for sure. The corners are pretty good. I'm not hitting awkward geometry. The layered roads are a bit weird. I think they could probably do with I mean, this, this track was, of course, designed before the latest season, the latest series, because they do now have, like, proper motorway parts, which I think would work better than the slabs that they've been putting down. But I think they've done well with what they had available. So, yeah. I kind of wish that it was only two laps, because these are fairly long laps. <laughs> Or the usual regulation three. I'm not quite sure why four. Is that really necessary? It's not a short sprint. Just to make sure you're really paying attention, I guess. And they get their not money's worth? I don't know. You don't get paid for these things. We're racking up the ultimate clean racings at least because I think we've done pretty well so far. I've had a few bad corners but I haven't really wiped out into any walls. If we lost any clean racing bonuses it would have been when we were first working our way through the pack before we got into first I suspect. And there we are. Always a bit unsatisfying coming along the home straight after a sharp corner. But, uh, yeah. I feel that the, the finish should actually be over... Well, this isn't much better either, actually, come to think of it. I don't know, maybe the, the finish line should be at the end of that straight, rather than the start of that straight. But then, when you first start, you'd be immediately going to a sharp corner. So, yeah, I guess maybe it just should have been a little bit more stretched. A lot of the length of the track is in these tight corner sections down the back here. Whereas I feel maybe it would have served better to, after doing this bit around here, instead of going through the sort of lightning squiggle chicane style corners, it should have gone up and over and then left instead of right, which it looks like they might have even intended to do. It should go left instead of right. And then we'd have a, a nice big long straight coming into the finish line. That would be a lot more satisfying. But never mind. We got it done. And with that we do have our first prize of the season, the Ionic 5N, which is an electric hatchback. Not spectacularly exciting, but never mind. Uh, it might come in handy sometime. And that means we're now 17 points away from the Nissan Z23. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.